Hi guys and welcome to another video where we are going to talk about social media mining techniques. So this section briefly discusses the overall process for building a social media mining application before digging into the details in the next videos. So the process can be summarized in the following steps. The first one is authentication, then you have the next data collection. Then you have data cleaning and pre-processing. Then you have modeling and analysis. And then you have the result presentation. And on the image here, you can see the overall process. This is an overview of the process, the overall process for social media mining. So what happens is, is in an application is it's the authentication step is typically performed using the industry standard called open authorization or OAuth. The process is three-legged, legged, meaning that it, it involves three actors, a user, a consumer, our application, and a resource provider, the social media platform. So the steps in the process are follows. The user agrees with the consumer to grant access to the social media platform. And number two, the step number two is as the user doesn't give their social media password directly to the consumer, the consumer has an initial exchange with the resource provider to gener generate a token and a secret. These are used to sign each request and prevent forgery. Step three is the user is then redirected with the token to the resource provider, which will ask to confirm authorization, authorizing the consumer to access the user's data. Step four is uh, depending on the nature of the social media platform, it will also ask to confirm whether the consumer can perform any action on the user's behalf. For example, post an update, share a link, and so on. Step five is the resource provider issues a valid token for the consumer. And step six, the, the token can then go back to the user confirming the access. So this is actually the process I was talking about. I'm sorry about that. I should have scrolled down. So this shows the O auth process which with reference to each of the steps described earlier the aspect to remember is that the exchange of credentials like username and password only happens between the user and the resource provider through the steps three and four all other exchanges are driven by tokens from the user's perspective, this apparently complex process <coughs> happens when the user is visiting our web app and hits the login with Facebook or Twitter, Google Plus and so on button. Then the user has to confirm that they are granting privileges to our app and everything from for them happens behind the scenes. And from a developer's perspective, the nice part is that the Python ecosystem has already well-established libraries for most social media platforms, uh, which come with an implementation of the authentication process. As a developer, once you have registered your, registered your application with the target service, the platform will provide the necessary authorization tokens for your app. And here you can see I've created an app for this purpose of this YouTube training for these videos. Um, and this shows a, a, this is a custom Twitter app that I've created called Data Mining YouTube Training. On the keys and access tokens configuration page, the developer can find the API key and secret, as well as the access token and access token secret, 
We will discuss the details of the authorization for each social media platform in the relevant videos. <coughs> so go ahead and create your own app if you want right now. Don't use these, this information because I will delete the app after, after we have finished the tutorials. So please don't use the information provided here. So the data collection, cleansing and pre-processing steps are also dependent on the social media platform we are dealing with. In particular, the data collection step is tied to the initial authorization as we can only download data that we have been granted access to. Cleaning, cleaning and pre-processing on the other hand, are functional to the type of data modeling and analysis that we decide to employ to produce insights on the data. So if we get, go back to our uh, uh, image here, the modeling and analysis is performed by the component labeled analytics engine, this component here. Typical data processing tasks that will encounter are text mining and graph mining. Text mining, also referred to as text analysis, is the process of deriving structured information from unstructured textual data. Text mining is applicable to most social media platforms as the users are allowed to publish content in the form of posts or comments. Some examples of text mining applications include the following. Document classification, which is this is the task of assigning a document to one or more categories. Then you have document clustering. This is the task of grouping documents into subsets called clusters that are coherent and distinct from one another, for example, by topic or subtopic. And then you have document summarization. This is the task of creating a shortened version of the document in order to reduce the information overload to the user, while still retaining the most important aspects described in the original source. Then you have entity extraction. This is the task of locating and classifying entity reference, references from a text into some desired categories such as persons, locations, or organizations. And then you have sentiment analysis. This is the task of identifying and categorizing sentiments and opinions expressed in a text in order to understand the attitude towards a particular product, topic, service, and so on. Not all these applications are tailored for social media, but the growing amount of textual data available through these platforms makes social media a natural playground for text mining. Then you have graph mining. Graph mining is also focused on the structure of the data. Graphs are simple to understand, yet powerful data structure that is generic enough to be applied to any different data representations. In graphs, there are two main components to consider. There are nodes, which represents, uh, represent entities or objects and edges, which represent relationships or connections between nodes. In the context of social media, the obvious use of a graph is to represent the social relationships of our users. More in general, in social sciences, the graph structure used to represent social relationship is also referred to as social network. And in terms of using such data structure within social media, uh, we can naturally represent users as nodes and their relationships, such as friends of or followers as edges. In this way, information such as friends of friends who like Python becomes easily accessible but just by traversing the graph which means walking from one node to the other by following the edges 
Graph theory and graph mining offer more options to discover deeper insights that are not as clearly visible as the previous example. After a high level discussion on social media mining, we will introduce some of the useful Python tools that are commonly used in data mining projects that are we going to uh, start look at from the next videos now, which is more technically. Uh, now we're going more into the Python tools. We are going we're going to have a look at in the in the next video. So see you in the next video.